Hello everyone. We are moving to the term two based topics based on informatic practices. So within the term two, we are covering the portions based on SQL, then computer networks. So the total marks that we are expecting is 35. So within the term one, we attended 35 mark questions and within the term two also we are attending 35 marks questions and uh, from that 25 marks that's provided from SQL and networking portion that contains 10 mark questions. So that's the topic division based on term 2 and the topics that we will cover based on SQL that's provided here. The functions are not only this particular portion, the queries that's already covered within the plus one that's also included there and the networking portion that's also part of the term 2. And uh, for the practical section, we are expecting the SQL queries and the practical files which contains minimum 12 SQL queries and then the project submission that contains three marks. So project submission means you need to provide the coding section along with the synopsis that we already submitted within the term one exam. And uh, we need to appear for the viva section and the total marks for the practical that's 15. So seven marks that's for the uh, SQL queries and for the SQL based practical record carries two marks and for the project submission three marks and viva three marks and total is 50. So that's the weightage based on the term two. Then based on the project section we are doing this particular video. So when you are doing your project you need to remember a few things. The first thing is which are the concepts that you need to integrate there. So we already covered Pandas, data visualization section and the connectivity section within the term one. So based on that, we are going to do the project work. So when you're doing your project work, you need to combine PyMySQL or SQL connector. So which are the concepts that you need to club there that we are discussing as the first step, PyMySQL and the SQL Alchemy, SQL Alchemy. That's the two modules that we need to install as the first step for doing the, our project. Instead of PyMySQL, we can use SQL Connector also. So that's the two sections that we need to use there. So that's the first thing that you need to remember. And then when you are doing your project along this particular modules, you need to use Pandas and Matplotlib module also, matplotlib module also. So uh, pandas, from the pandas, we will use data frame section and from the matplotlib, definitely either line graph or bar chart that we can use within your project. So these are the main things that you need to remember based on your project. So data frame and the data visualization section, either by using line or bar chart, that's the main things that you need to do within your project. And along with that, the SQL connectivity, MySQL and Python connectivity that you need to do there by using SQL Alchemy and PyMySQL. So that's the main concept that they are specifying within the project concept. So they already specified data can be imported in Pandas for analysis and visualization. So these are the concepts that they already specified, which are the concepts that you need to cover within your project. So we are moving to the project section. How we will do that that we are going to discuss as the first step. So this one is a sample program based on the connectivity. So when you are doing your connectivity section, you need to install the pip file as the first step. So we need to install the pip file from the command prompt by using pip install pip install py mysql. PyMySQL, that's the pip file that you need to install as the first step. Then that particular uh, module is already installed within, uh, within my system. So they will definitely show the message, the requirement already satisfied. And then the next one is pip install mysql pip install SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy. So that's another module that we need to install separately. 
so that particular section also that's already installed within my system so that's why they are providing requirement already satisfied there so these are the main steps that you need to follow there so when you are providing this particular pip installation from the command prompt you need to remember one thing your system must be connected to the internet then these particular libraries that will be automatically connected from the server so that's the only thing that you need to remember when you are trying to install the pip file just remember one thing just install this pip file when never your system is connected to the internet so that's the only thing that you need to remember then another pip file that we can install based on the connectivity section is pip install mysql hyphen connector mysql hyphen connector or py mysql that's the two drivers that we can uh, use there either we can use py mysql or otherwise we can depend on mysql connector so along with that we are using sql alchemy so this one also that we can install by using pip install mysql hyphen connector so this one is already installed within my system so like this you can provide the installation process along with this we will provide sql alchemy also so that's the procedure for installing the main packages or modules within our system so after that we are importing the panda section i hope you already installed the pandas module within your system so we can directly import it import pandas as pd so uh, within the command prompt like the same way you need to install pandas also if that's already installed you can directly do it otherwise just install it and after that only we can import this particular modules so import pandas as pd then import sql alchemy as sq and import py mysql so that's the three modules or packages that we are installing within our system and we are importing the same modules within our coding section for using the rest of the coding so after that you are setting the connection by using this sql alchemy alias name sq that we are using here sq that's the alias name that we are providing for the sql alchemy module then sq dot create underscore engine sq dot create underscore engine that's the function predefined function that's already provided by the manufacturer for providing the connectivity section so within the create engine we will specify the driver information mysql that's the software that we are going to use of the backend so mysql plus py mysql py mysql that's the driver that we are using here so py mysql colon double slash root what is root the default username of mysql default username within the mysql then after the colon separator we will provide the password we will provide the mysql password so mysql that's the software that i used as the backend so within the mysql i set the password as dtp1 so the same password that i used here as dtp1 then at the right local host so at the right local host means where we are maintaining our database our database that's maintained within our system itself so that's why we are specifying at the right local host if you are providing uh, the database within another network the system definitely that server name or that system name that we will specify there then here within the same mission we are maintaining the database so that's why we are using at the right local host then slash the table database name this one is the database name so that particular database that's already generated within my system so i'm using the command use gtp here that's uh, the reason is that particular database that's uh, already generated within my system so i'm just using it and here you can see the tables that's already generated there by using short tables command so these are the tables that i already generated there so we are using that database there and then if you require to create a table student from the python that we can do by using cyn dot execute of cyn what is cyn this connection string cyn dot execute of cyn dot execute of within double quotes create table if not exist student so if the student table is not existing 
they will create a table with this particular syntax. So, if the student table is not existing, they will create the table student with the fields roll number, student name, then date of birth and GUID. That's the fields that they are generating there. That particular table that's already generated within my system. So, it's not required to regenerate the table again. So, that's why we are providing if not access. If the table is not existing, then only that particular table that will be generated within the MySQL. Then after that, I'm providing a dictionary with the values, the keys, roll number and the value that we will insert within the runtime. Then S name, then S date of birth and GUID. That's the fields that we already created within the table. So that, that same field names that we are using here for inserting the data and uh, the same data type that we are inserting as the values. So within that particular columns, we are inserting these values that we inserted within the dictionary variable. So we created the dictionary, the dict to one variable and from that dictionary variable, we are creating the data frame df1. So that particular data frame that's already generated with the name df1. And after that, here I'm going to show you the table that's already generated. Select star from student and uh, for creating this particular table that's already generated i am going to drop that particular table for regenerating it uh, how this particular coding that's work that i will show you so here i'm going to drop this table drop table command that i'm providing for that drop table student so that table that's deleted now that particular table is not no more existed that's does not exist that particular message that we got and after this i'm going to generate the table with the content that i inserted there so df1 dot to underscore sql what will happen they are trying to insert the value from the data frame df1 to my sql to underscore sql that's a predefined function that we are using there so df1 dot to sql to underscore sql then the table name then the connection string, then index equal to false. Index equal to false means whenever we are creating a data frame, they will automatically create an index there. So whenever you are inserting the value within the MySQL, we don't require to insert that particular index again. So that's why we are providing index equal to false there. Then we are providing one more argument there. If underscore exist equal to append. If underscore exist equal to append means if that particular table is already there with certain contents. We don't require to delete that particular content. So that's why we are providing if underscore exist equal to append. So what will happen? They will automatically add that particular content to the existing data along with the existing data. So here I'm going to execute this particular coding. So they already asked for the raw number. So I'm providing the raw number one there and uh, the name and then the date of birth. I'm providing this date as a date of birth and the GUID that I provided here like this. So that particular data that's already inserted like this. So we are going to counter check whether that particular table is generated and whether that data is inserted there. So here you can see that particular data that's already inserted there. So from the Python, we provide this particular coding for insertion process. And that's already inserted within the table. So this is the simple way for uh, taking the value within the data frame and we will directly write a particular content within the table. So the rest of the sections, how to display and how we will generate it as a project that we will discuss within the coming video. Thank you.